Hello, uh, this is Bajran, ML17066. In this video, I will be talking about the quasi-crystals and some of their basic physical properties. The first question that we would have in mind is what exactly is this quasi-crystal? You can get a rough idea from understanding the meaning of the word quasi. The Macmillan Dictionary defines this term as pretending to be or resembling. So along with the suffix crystal, we get that uh, the word quasi-crystal means something that uh, resembles or pretends to be a crystal. In the year 1982, Dan Schekman, an Israeli material scientist, discovered something that created a huge debate in the field of crystallography. On a sabbatical at Johns Hopkins University, he was working with an electron diffraction of an alloy made of aluminum and manganese. He obtained this diffraction pattern uh, that sparked a frenzy in the field uh, no one believes results. To understand why that was the case, it is important that we revisit the definition of crystals and crystal lattice. By the turn of the last century to its first half, the experts thought of crystallography to be a mature subject, with nothing more that can be found or discovered. They believed that all solids can be classified into two, crystalline and amorphous. The book, uh, Introduction to Solid State Physics, written by Charles Kittel, originally published in the year 1953, describes crystals as being a dimensional periodic array of identical building blocks. These building blocks can take various shapes. For example, this image shows a 2D crystal made by a square building block. And evidently, just by observation, we can say that this is a periodic and dynamic structure. Um, similar crystals can also be three-dimensional too. In order to span the entire space, it is believed that the work must be crystallographically symmetric. That is, we can see that from this image, a triangle can span the entire space and can be rotated three times, constituting a threefold symmetry. And the same can be observed in four and sixfold rotational symmetries. But when using pentagons, which are motifs with fivefold symmetries, we find that spanning uh, the entire space is not possible. There are these holes that we observe. So the fivefold symmetry, along with uh, symmetries greater than six, come under the crystallographically forbidden symmetry. That is, no crystal can exist within these symmetries. Now, to identify a rotational symmetry a crystal possesses, uh, we can use the process of X-ray or electron crystallography. When X-rays or electrons are passed through crystals, their diffraction patterns with the bright spots showing the uh, black spots can be captured by the screen. The pattern or the structure of this uh, diffraction pattern is analogous to what symmetry it possesses. For example, this diffraction pattern shows a six-fold hexagonal symmetry. Now, comparing this diffraction pattern obtained by uh, Dan Schekman, uh, we find that the structure that is visible is that of a decagon, a polygon with 10 equal sides. So, theoretically, it should mean a 10 fold symmetry, as a forbidden symmetry should exist. At first, even Schekman did not believe what he saw. And famously, he noted this result into this log as uh, 10 fold followed by three exclamation marks. Uh, not surprisingly, uh, none of his colleagues believed his results either. He even got kicked off his research team for continuing to believe in this result. He was also uh, only it, it was only after two years of struggle that he was able to publish the results in the year 1984. To understand uh, what uh, we saw, we will look at uh, a thought experiment. Take this periodic three-dimensional simple cubic lattice. Uh, let us shine some light from the any direction at some tilt, and we will observe a two-dimensional pattern at the screen opposite the crystal. This pattern might not be periodic, but it obviously is ordered as it forms from, as the result of this crystal. Such a 2D set of points does not hold into our uh, classical definition of crystal. So such crystals are said to possess quasi-periodicity and it's been formulated to constitute the quasi-crystals. That is, a quasi-crystal of dimension D can be expressed as a crystal in some higher dimension greater than D. Mathem mathematically, uh, quasi-periodicity can be expressed as a summation of two different periodic functions. It's that their uh, ratio of their periodicities is an irrational number. One such famous example is that of the Penrose tiles. Now, Penrose constructed a tiling using two different rhombuses, one fat and one thin. With this, uh, following certain matching rules, he was able to span the entire two-dimensional space. This result was aperiodic. That is, by shifting any tiles uh, with these shapes by finite distance without rotation, cannot produce the exact same tiling. But the system possessed a five-fold symmetry. Now, this inspired Alan McKay to construct a similar thing in three dimensions, and he simulated the diffraction pattern to be exactly the same as that of Schepens. This backed his observations that his pattern was not due to any mistakes and that the presence of quasi crystal was very much a possibility. 
This led to Dan Shetman receiving the Nobel Prize in the year 2011. Now we move to understanding the reciprocal space of this quasi crystal. Normally, a reciprocal space of a crystal can be expressed in terms of the linear relation of some basis vectors. That is, for a crystal of dimension D, its reciprocal space can be written as a linear combination of uh, D basis vectors. But what is different for a quasi crystal of the same dimensions is that it cannot be expressed through just D basis vectors. It requires that the reciprocal space of the D dimensional quasi crystals be composed as a linear combination of more than D basis vectors. We saw thing with our thought experiment earlier. It is a d-dimensional quasi-crystal can be expressed as a crystal of more than d dimensions. In case of quasi, uh, echocentral halloid used by Schechtman, uh, his three-dimensional quasi-crystal can be thought to be a projection of a six-dimensional cubic lattice crystal. Now, since Schechtman's discovery, there have been numerous research works conducted and many quasi-crystals have been discovered to be found, both naturally and artificially. One major example of 2D quasi-crystals that can be found in medieval uh, Islamic arch architecture. Um, uh, where the scholars have no, uh, shown to uh, uh, the scholars have shown that the patterns follow quasi crystal instruction. Uh, many quasi crystals and their uh, physical properties have been well studied. Most of their physical and mechanical properties are found to be lying between amorphous and crystalline solids. A characteristic of quasi crystals is their uh, low thermal conductivity for a broad range of temperature. Even at a low, low room temperature, their, 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 thermal, their, their thermal conductivity is typically just between 2 and 3 uh, watts per meter Kelvin. This is very much lower than metallic glasses, which belong to the amorphous family of solids. The thermal transport in quasi crystals is also similar to that of a glass or uh, amorphous material. Electrical resistivity in quasi crystals decreases with increasing temperature until the material dissociates, which typically happens at around uh, 1000 Kelvin. Uh, the magnitude of the electrical resistivity remains pretty much unchanged throughout this temperature range, typically just changing by less than 30 percent. Quasi crystals are also very sensitive to chemical composition, that is, a very minute and slight change in its chemical composition can severely affect and influence the transport and physical properties. Quasi crystals are, in addition, oxidation and corrosion resistant. Most importantly, monetarily speaking, quasi crystals are very cheap to manufacture, with the price being less than ten dollars per pound. In recent years, many material scientists have identified that the quasi-crystals are of high importance when it comes to industrial usage. It has been used and marketed as a non-stick coating for pans and utensils. Other alternatives, although providing better non-stickiness, fade with time and performance. But popularity of quasi-crystal in coating is because of their tendency to be long-lasting in terms of performance. Next, we will look at in brief the heat capacity of quasi-crystals. The heat capacity in quasi-crystals are found to be strange in high and low temperatures. Change in that it is dominated by extrinsic properties, as we saw about the chemical composition. To check that, we plot the specific heat versus temperature graph for two, uh, three different cases. One for a pure quasi crystal, and uh, two for an impure defected quasi crystal, and the third for a periodic approximate crystal. The last case behaves like a normal metallic compound following a Debye like behavior. As with specific heat, we express them as being inclusive of the electronic contribution, that is gamma times T, and the rest two terms from the atomic vibrations. For the two quasi crystals, they have similar atomic vibrations, uh, uh, atomic vibrative contributions, but show differences in their electronic parts. For the perfect case, Cp by T decreases to zero exponentially, uh, with uh, theta C being the uh, critical temperature, where the imperfect case uh, still has a non zero intercept. This shows that the perfect uh, quasi crystals are insulators below 4 Kelvin. In summary, we have seen that the quasi crystals span the entire space following the crystallographically forbidden symmetries and that they can be expressed as being a crystal in uh, dimensions greater than its actual dimensions. We have also learned about the certain physical and uh, the thermoelectric properties followed by their applications. With this, I conclude this presentation. Thank you.